So I'm out here in the lower Pyrenees. I'm doing a little bit of a shakedown hike, kind of doing some last minute gear testing and just kind of getting things dialed in. But this is gonna be useful for anyone who's into ultralight through hiking, backpacking. I wanted to share some of my experiences, talk about some of the gear providers that are making really good gear out of Europe. And uh, not least of all is this prior arm shelter from Lightweight Equipment. That's kind of the crescendo of the video, so I'll leave that to last. Let's get into it. So, welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Chase. This is all about preparing your mind, your body and your gear for the mountains. So, let's start with the most important stuff, uh, the backpack. So, pack is from Lightweight Equipment. They are a small ultralight gear manufacturer out of Ukraine. And this is made from DCF, formerly Cuban fiber. It's extremely light, uh, less than 500 grams. Each model is a little bit different as they are handmade. This is really something that has everything that I wanted in a backpack. I looked long and hard to find a manufacturer uh, in Europe that was doing really good quality stuff and had all the features that I wanted. So quickly the features that I wanted were lots and lots of pockets. <laughs> I'm big on pockets. So. Uh, flexible shoulder pockets, so I'm going to be putting my phone in there. You know, I can put my sunglasses in there or whatever. I really wanted uh, a little bit of padding, both on the shoulders and the hips. A sternum strap, just something that I really need in a backpack. I always feel far more comfortable and far more kind of safe, and I can adjust the pack weight if it's if it's annoying my shoulders really uh, finely if I've got a sternum strap. So I really wanted that. It's got a little whistle there as well, which is cool. On the hip belts, it's got uh, two big pockets also, and I really love ha having pockets at my hips, so that was something that I really needed. And of course, it's got a hip, hip belt clasp as well. I've made a little bit of a modification here. The pack, uh, you know, comes without that section. What I've done is modify this a little bit. This paracord here, I've swapped it from the front of the pack to the back of the pack. And I've taken my back support from my little Osprey 22 liter backpack. And I've just slid that in here. So essentially now I kind of have like a framed pack for under 500 grams. So I'm not going super ultra light. I'm probably gonna be carrying about 10 kilos. I've got lots of camera equipment. I'm gonna be filming along the way. So it's pretty important for me to have a little bit of back support and be comfortable for you know the month or so that I'm going to be spending out here. On the front of the backpack, you know you see these on a lot of these gear, ultralight gear manufacturers now. Uh, stretchy pocket on the front, so you've got heaps of room. You can throw loads of different stuff in there. I've got you know my trowel, my toiletry stuff in there. So there's lots of room at the front there. Typical kind of roll top closure with a big buckle over the front. Uh, lots of kind of paracord all over it. And you know what these packs are like, they're pretty simple, very light, very basic stuff. But what I really wanted for this was to be able to modify it. I wanted big pockets and that's what I got with this backpack. I'll go into more detail on a separate video about this pack later on once I've used it and once I've got to know a little bit, but for now, that's it. In terms of my water, I'm just taking a 1.5 liter plastic water bottle. I've got a fair cap uh, filter, really cool little company out of South America. And they have a really strong mission behind their brand, helping out people uh, applying fresh water to communities in need in South America. So I was very happy to buy one of these and support those guys. That screws just onto the top of the water bottle, just like it does with any soya or any other kind of uh, in bottle water filter like that. So that is my water system. Okay, in terms of clothing, there's not much of it. I'm going pretty light in terms of clothing. This is a Coolmax shirt. This costs 10 euros. Um, Coolmax is an amazing fabric. It breathes really, really well. It feels like cotton. I don't really like the feel of polyester. It makes me feel gross, sweaty and icky. So this breathes really well. It dries very quickly. It's super light. It's very affordable. So I probably will take two of these Coolmax shirts. I've got my uh, super light, uh, very short uh, running shorts that I'm going to be wearing along the way. 
I've got uh, thermal longs and thermal uh, top. So this one is from Smart Wall. So that's going to be acting basically as my mid layer. I've got an icebreaker merino wool uh, cap, which I'm going to sleep in or wear if it does get super cold, which it probably won't. And for that reason, you know, I'm doing this in August, September. It's unlikely to be cold. I am probably going to be getting a lot of rain. September is typically really rainy in the Pyrenees. So I made some crucial decisions here about my clothing. I decided not to bring a down jacket. That's because I'm going to be taking a sleeping bag from Astukas. They're a company here in the Pyrenees that make ultralight sleeping bags. I haven't got it yet. It should arrive in a day or two. That converts into a poncho, which is essentially a down jacket. So I can wear that when I'm cooking and stuff. So I'm either going to be wearing the poncho sitting around at camp, or I'm going to be using my uh, 150 weight merino wool in combination with this jacket from Cortazu. Rain protection was probably my number one priority here. So this is a three layer uh, breathable waterproof jacket. It is designed as a, like a ski slash mountaineering hiking jacket. It breathes incredibly well. It has excellent thermal properties. It keeps me very, very warm, but also prevents me from sweating. So it has a breathable membrane similar to Gore-Tex throughout, but I really find that it's super comfortable. Again, it's got lots of pockets. I actually got this for more for mountaineering. It is a helmet compatible hood. So that is going to be my major, you know, foul weather jacket, whether it's windy or rainy. I'm gonna be probably wearing this a lot. So I'll have that with the smart wall underneath and I think that'll be plenty of warmth. In terms of other clothing, uh, I've got these socks from Venturi. I've got two pairs of these. So I've got a long pair and then I've got a short pair. These are incredible socks. I really recommend that you guys look into these. They have a lifetime warranty. They've got uh, anti-microbial silver light technology. They dry super quick. They breathe. They are basically blister proof. So if you've got a good sock shoe combination, you really shouldn't have any problems with your feet. I think it's worth investing a lot of money in socks. I've always said that. I'll continue to say that. I think people overlook socks and how important they are. You know, if you're walking for 500 miles, you really want to have your foot care system down. And part of that for me is about having really, really good socks. And these Venturi socks are ridiculously good. Uh, they have a lifetime warranty. So even if they do wear out, which I'm sure they won't, they're crazy durable, um, they will send you a new pair. So pretty awesome stuff. In terms of the shoes, <laughs> these are my old Dynafit uh, trail runners. I'm not gonna be wearing these. I've got a brand new pair of shoes. Again, <laughs> they still haven't arrived. I'll probably do a separate video all about those. And the last piece of clothing that I'll talk about is my hat. This is just from Decathlon here. Um, 11 euros or something like that. Very, very light. I like the light, soft material. The main reason why I wanted a hat like this is because it's August, September. It's gonna be very, very sunny, very, very hot. So I really needed like good sun protection. That was a very important purchase. I'll also take a cap as well because sometimes I just like wearing a cap. Um, let's talk food. So I'm primarily gonna be doing cold soaking but I do want the luxury of having a hot meal every now and then. I'm very happy to carry the extra 300 grams or whatever to bring a gas canister. So I will be bringing some gas along the way. My Covia stove, which I've talked about in detail before. I've just taken the stability plate from my jet boil and I'm taking that along with me because I pretty much always need it. Uh, in terms of my cooking vessel, I have a uh, Lixada. Charter titanium 650 mil pot with a lid so I can cook slash eat out of that. Uh, I will bring an extra cold soaking container, just like a peanut butter jar or whatever, to do my cold soaking in. And I'll be cooking, you know, making coffee. And this thing comes with uh, a nice little soft, lightweight pouch. So that's 
essentially my cook system. I have uh, my food bags. These are from New Dora. These are silicon, leak proof, like a Ziploc kind of bag, reusable. So in terms of my food, this is one thing I spent a really large amount of time on trying to plan good quality, nutritious meals that are lightweight, uh, a lot of the research that I did were put from people in the States and they're eating a lot of like very typical American style food. So I'm going to be doing a whole separate video about, you know, nutrition on trail and what I'm using. This is definitely one of the meals I'm going to be making <laughs> on the GR11. These bags are going to be crucial for my meal planning. I got 12 or 15 of these for like 10 euros on Amazon. Um, totally worth it. That's an absolute game changer in terms of food. Definitely look into those. Other little bits and pieces that aren't particularly important. Um, just a mosquito head net. I actually can't see shit. <laughs> uh, repair kit. Uh, my tent stakes. I'll talk about my tent in detail pretty shortly. I've got my Valon Classics sunglasses, which I've done a whole video on. I might take a different style, we'll see. I've got my Cedar Summit long-handled spoon. I'm not taking a fork, I don't really need a fork. I've got a Swiss Army knife, very uh, old school of me, but this has everything I need. It's got scissors, um, screwdriver if I need it, can opener, obviously a knife, all sorts of stuff on there. It doesn't really weigh that much, so I'm gonna bring that along with me. Uh, sunscreen, uh, my lighting situation. I'm going to be bringing this Phoenix uh, E16 tiny little handheld lamp. I don't really want to bring a head torch because I just don't need one. <laughs> it has a small battery. I'm going to bring a spare battery with me. I'm going to clip that onto my hat and that is sufficient for a head torch. It's very, very light, 21 grams. There's even rechargeable batteries that you can get with these that you can charge with a USB. So I'm going to be using this little guy along the way. I'm going to be charging it using the RAV Power 21K milliamp battery. This is a gigantic battery. The reason why I'm taking this is because I want to obviously charge my phone. Uh, the camera that I'm filming this on needs to be charged as well as my little torch there can be charged by this battery. So I wanted plenty of battery on this trip mainly because I've been doing a lot of filming. So I think this will uh, last me. I'm not bringing a solar panel just because I find them annoying like trying to face them in the sun while I'm walking all the time I just wanted to bring a really big battery and then I can recharge it uh, when I get into town on my resupplies I can charge it up and that will last me for three or four days I'm sure the camera I'm using is brand new it's the Canon M50 really nice lightweight perfect the hiking filming camera really I'm just using the kit lens the 15 to 45 and then here I've got a couple of extra SD cards because I want to be uh, not holding back with the filming. I'm going to be making a lot of videos from this trip, so I want lots of storage. All right, we're getting to the business end of things. Let's start talking about sleeping. Oh, I've been kneeling here for a while. Oh, God damn. Again. Oh. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be using my Astukas uh, quilt poncho thing. I'll do a whole separate video about that. Can't wait to try it out. Uh, I'm also bringing uh, a super luxury. This is a, a pillow. It's just from Four Claws, which is uh, a decathlon brand. This is super comfortable. It was only eight euros or something, and I walked past and grabbed it, and it's just so soft. So that is a severe luxury that I'm bringing along with me and will hopefully contribute to some good night's sleep along the way. I think sleep is super important, which is why I'm bringing a full mat as well. This one is from Camp. Uh, Camp is an Italian brand. They make pretty amazing stuff. Uh, it's full length. It is incredibly light, 315 grams. For me, you know, I looked at getting like a torso length mattress. It was actually hard to find one. I looked at the therma rests, the ones that fold up. I thought that that would be super annoying. It takes up loads of space. This thing packs down really tiny. I can stuff it away and uh, it provides a very comfortable night's sleep. I had my first night on it last night. I chose to use this rather than my Cedar Summit one because the Cedar Summit one is quite heavy and it takes up a lot of space. So 
whilst that is a beautiful insulated mat that I'll be using in the high mountains in winter and um, on mountaineering trips I wanted something that was a lot lighter this very affordable I think it was maybe 45 euros or something like that like I said super light packs down easily it's a no-brainer I've also brought a Saliwa survival blanket, just an emergency blanket. I think that's standard procedure. They weigh next to nothing. You should always bring one, if not for you, just for other people. If you find them in trouble, you can wrap them up in that. That's going to help them. The only thing left is to talk about my tent, my shelter. So let's get into that. So your shelter or your tent, your tarp is ultimately going to be one of the most important decisions that you'll make if you're going through hiking. So when I started researching and looking into shelters, I originally thought that the best thing for me was to get a tarp and a ground sheet. After plenty of research, I decided that it was just too hard to get a hold of a Polycro ground sheet. I couldn't find one here in Europe without paying an extraordinary amount in postage for a tiny little lightweight piece of plastic so i decided that i would go with an inner and the other reason i decided to go with an inner was that the mosquitoes here in august september in the pyrenees can be pretty rough so i wanted to be able to be comfortable not be harassed by bugs so i decided to get an inner as well as the outer kind of tarp system. So I looked around for loads of companies that were based here in Europe. So again, I didn't have to pay loads of postage. This company is lightweight equipment. It's the same manufacturer as my backpack based in Ukraine. The outer is completely separate. You can buy that separately. That is around 400 grams. The inner again is around 400 grams. So you essentially have what could be a two person tarp that you could use individually and some nights I may use it without the inner if there isn't too many bugs around. So aside from the bugs, the main reason that I decided to get an inner is, was that the inner weighed around the same as the ground sheet that I already have at home. So I could have basically brought the ground sheet that would have weighed the exact same amount as an inner. So in this case, I get uh, a mosquito inner. I got a tent floor here and that's everything I need. So that's the tarp, it's around 400 grams, super light, and that would probably do the job. And we've got the inner, which is probably around 300 grams, so all up, it's like 740 grams, something like that, so pretty light. So I've used this tent for the first time last night. I'm actually out here with my girlfriend and we slept in there together. I probably wouldn't recommend this uh, for two people unless you wanted to have sex with that person <laughs> i think you've got to be uh very comfortable with the person that you're sleeping with if you're in this tent with another person it is primarily a one person deal but at a pinch you can squeeze two people in there if you're very close with that person <laughs> Um, you will need a, either a tree branch above or a trekking pole to support the, uh, the tent itself. That was the one thing about this tent that I wasn't sure about. I thought that would become quite annoying, but I think with one person it'll be absolutely fine. It won't be a drama. So you can sneak in through the door here. The tent, as you can see, has two doors. It is designed to be very changeable, much like a tarp. Like you can lift up one side for airflow or you can close it all down, cinch it down like you're, if you're in a storm, for example. Uh, we had a little storm come through last night, but nothing too serious. Got a little bit of rain and it held up really well. You have to kind of know how to set this thing up. So I will do a whole video on that that will go into a lot of detail once I've kind of really dialed the system down but it's not like a pop-up easy to use beginner person's tent I will say that this is really for lightweight hiking long distance cycling cycle touring anything where weight is a huge issue and uh, protection is a huge issue as well but so far I love it like I said I'll do a more in-depth video at the end of my trip where I'll go into a lot more detail about what worked what didn't what I'll change but for now this has been my little shakedown hike. If you got some value out of this video, please hit the like button. It helps me know what kind of content you like and what I can make in the future. Thanks for following along. I'll see you on the summit.